You know what we should call this whole segment? Just uh, like PGA live merger. <laughs> I don't know how you write it out, but I think it could work. Let's just roll the clip. When I try to remove myself from the situation and I look at the bigger picture and I look at 10 years down the line, I think ultimately this is going to be good for the the, the game of professional golf. So that was Rory McIlroy, one of golf's biggest stars, responding to this breaking news last week. Very historic in terms of golf itself with Liv and PGA merging. Now, McElroy's comments are quite the reversal because he also, once upon a time, said this, there's no room in the golf world for Live Golf. Now, Live Golf sprouted up from seemingly nothing just under two years ago, but it grew really fast, backed by Saudi money. Some of pro golf's biggest names have flocked to the deep pockets of the Live Golf Tour. It competed directly with the PGA Tour, luring over some of the biggest names in golf with the promise of big payouts, and oh, how that rivalry became bitter, fast. 11 golfers from Saudi-backed Live Golf League have filed an antitrust lawsuit against the PGA Tour challenging their suspensions for the FedEx Cup. The two golf organizations were enemies from the outset, running completely separate pro golf tours, suing each other and slagging each other in the media. These are two parties who were in litigation against each other, suit and counter suit. As recent as a month ago, the PGA was telling certain tournaments they couldn't have title sponsors that had any ties to Saudi Arabia. The fact that they're now in bed together logistically and financially is such an about turn, quite frankly, that even the writer's room of the HBO show Succession would never actually fathom. So when it was announced that the two were merging, people were like, what the heck? Like, like why? Or, or how does this even happen? And now, Hours ahead of one of the PGA's biggest events, the U.S. Open. I would expect it to be a very, very uh, uh, big storyline this week. I would say this week, you know, any golfer um, can expect to be, uh, you know, put through the ringer or, or at least asked, you know, how do you feel about this? Where do you stand? So first, a bit of background. The PGA Tour has deep roots, going back 100 years. They organize all of the big golf tournaments you've probably heard of, and it's thanks to the PGA Tour, people like Tiger Woods and Jack Nicklaus are household names. Tour championship winner, Tiger Woods, a winner again. Liv, on the other hand, is brand spanking new, having only been started in 2022 by Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund, the PIF, alongside you know, two of the world's most prominent golfers, Phil Mickelson and Greg Norman. Mickelson convinced 48 players to join Liv, effectively removing them from the PGA Tour circuit. And, you know, despite the PGA having been around so much longer and having a virtual monopoly on major golf tournaments, they immediately saw Liv as a direct competitor and a rift in the world of golf was created. They have been successful luring some golfers away with giant sums of money. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars to people like um, Brooks Kopka and Bryson DeChambeau. So they've had success in, in some ways, but the product hasn't been great. It's dead in the water. I just can't see any reason why anyone would go. At the start, I mentioned lawsuits. Live Golf sued the PGA Tour, alleging anti-competitive practices for banning its players. The PGA countersued, claiming that by offering their golfers massive amounts of money to leave, Liv was interfering with the PGA's existing contracts. Good times. And there's this. The golfers who play for Liv get their millions and hundreds of millions of dollars from Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund. The Saudi Public Investment Fund is controlled by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, or MBS, as he's known. Now, MBS has a record of human rights violations and alleged involvement in the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Mohammed bin Salman, the overlord of Live Golf, is accused of war crimes in Yemen by the Human Rights Watch. Jamal Khashoggi was assassinated and dismembered after entering a Saudi consulate in 2018. It was a cruel reminder of the brutality of the Saudi government 
Her dubious relationship with freedom of expression is well documented. So what happened? How did everything change so suddenly with both organizations somehow seeing eye to eye? Well, it turns out both were grappling with some pretty serious existential problems. For the PGA side, the big problem was money. They were spending millions, tens of millions of dollars in legal fees, and essentially it was really expensive to go into battle against uh, the Saudi government, which, you know, the, the private investment fund, I think, controls some 700 or 800 billion dollars. Last week, The Wall Street Journal reported the PGA had spent nearly 50 million dollars in its legal battle with Liv and tapped into 100 million of its reserves to boost tour winnings to compete with Liv's extraordinary signing bonuses and, and prize money. And what about Liv? Well, they had a very different problem. Money was no issue, but no one was really watching their events. They've had trouble getting on TV, both because of minimal interest, but also because of all these ties to the Saudi government and sort of the, the moral questions that that raises. Their goal was to sports wash, to change the perception and relationship with their country via sport. Liv averaged fewer than 300,000 viewers for their opening tournament this year. PGA Tour events, you know, on the other hand, typically bring in well over two million. Win-win, the PGA stops blowing money on legal fights it can't win, brings its golfers back into the fold, and Liv gets the audience they've been hoping for. But if only it were that simple. That notion of sports washing, that, you know, for the Saudi government, the real win here may be to wipe away the stain of human rights abuses, washing it over with something that people genuinely find entertaining and fun. The question some folks are asking now, is the PGA complicit in this grand distraction? And does this become a model for other countries to follow? What's stopping a massive investor or a country from the Gulf in buying tennis, buying bigger skating, maybe, if you're China? There, there's really no end to this. And so, in a way, what we're seeing here is you can buy sport, you can sports watch, but you can also buy the silence of an entire sports community uh, when you engage in these ways. Now we realize the real question for most fans is going to be, how does this affect the game, right? Like, does it just go back to how it was or will the merger fundamentally change how the sport is played and or watched? Well, that we don't know, but, the US Open does start today.